This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. Oh. Yes, yes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Link Up Podcast with your host, Mr. King. And this week is going to be a slightly different episode. Well, not all the way. It's kind of going to be similar to last week. So before we kind of get too deep into this, I just wanted to say you no know, thank you to all the people that listened to the first episode. And <clears throat> yeah, thank you for supporting we're going to keep growing. I know it was a little kind of disjointed. I'm sure some of y'all wasn't expecting the music and all of that. But, you know, since it's just me on the podcast now, trying new things, experimenting new things, things, and there's going to be more to come, you know, <clears throat> trying, just experimenting. It's a new start, fresh start. So, yeah, why not experiment? Do things differently. All of that trying to have video for this one as well you know so that's something we'll see how it works hopefully it doesn't um cause any problems recording the video and stuff like that but anyway that's not y'all's problem that's me but welcome back to the link up podcast this is episode two and today we're just i mean we're just gonna jump right into it no no need for a whole bunch of long talk and introduction and all of that make sure you like subscribe um share the video with all your friends make sure to let them know that the link up is back in a slightly new format and all of that but hopefully you'll still enjoy it but to begin today's episode slight recap of last week you know, I talked about the album of the year, my own personal thoughts on what music I enjoyed in the hip hop world, some of the stuff that came out. And coincidentally, well, two things I talked about at the time of recording this podcast, I'm recording right now on a Sunday evening. And this is like literally not too long after Kanye West's album dropped. Me doubting the man having not high hopes not high expectations all of that from what Kanye West was about to do and he proved me wrong and in this case I'm happy to be proven wrong because like I said I've always been a fan of Kanye I'm just not necessarily in for all the antics I just want the album so for me I'm all the way happy and I'll say this the album is 27 songs long the album is an hour and 48 minutes long so i've only managed to listen to the album once and i can't even tell you what necessarily my highlight songs off of the album were from that one long listen because like i said it's an hour and 48 minutes so it's a long listen there is multiple songs <clears throat> um let me just fix that one second yeah and our video is back just had to you know just that quick but anyway like i was saying there's multiple songs that have multiple versions we've got quite a few features but at the same time it doesn't sound overly saturated with features so not only was i right about kanye west and his approach to this because this definitely does gives me does give me more complete album feelings compared to some of his last releases because the last one was yay i believe and then there was some other thing before that no there was yay and there was another one but there was a gospel album that had like kenny g feature and a a malice feature he did the yay album which was part of his seven um seven track album good music album rollout and to me i feel like this project just off my first listen it feels like those albums perfected like i was saying in last week's episode i was concerned about could he give us something that was beautiful dark twisted fantasy-esque now that he's in this new phase of his career where it's primarily about christianity gospel music not necessarily going into the secular vein but in a weird way 
and mind you this is only off of one listen i feel like he did it in a way that i wasn't expecting because it is clearly a very gospel album but it's still a fusion of gospel and rap like it feels like a combination of both but it doesn't sound preachy it's an interesting album it's an interesting mix like i definitely want to you know um go over the album some more listen to it a couple more times so i can really give you an in-depth review an in-depth analysis of my thoughts after properly sitting with it processing the album dissecting it getting into the lyrics really you know heavy because there's some certain there's some features and stuff like i remember seeing um talks online about how he's rumored to um replace jay-z's verse with uh, the baby verse because it was the same uh, song for some of the people that actually tuned into the listening sessions they were concerned that it seemed like he took the j um the j verse off and he put the baby but what he actually did in reality it seems like is he made two versions of the song and he did that with like let me pull up the track list right quick but basically he pretty much did that with like two or three songs we have jail part two okay okay part two junior part two and jesus lord part two so that's four songs actually that we have on this album that he made a part two to so i guess you can say that song instead of 27 it actually has 23 songs but then there's remixes so, and like depending in a lot of those remixes it's like different features and stuff that he switched out so it's like a new listening experience and you as a fan i guess kind of get to choose which version of the song you like better because he provided both of them so it's like there's no loss here and i'm sure it doesn't hurt the streams and stuff like that because it's still kind of one song like for royalties and publishing the way it works like if his verse isn't changed it's like people if you listen to one version he's getting paid from his public like it's it's interesting when you think about remixes and part twos and how they work on a business side for the artist involved it's beneficial in a lot of different ways but not gonna get too deep into all of that that's you know kind of music business nerd talk but anyway the album has features from everybody you can imagine like there's the j verse there's the baby verse there's the locks there's j electronica there's all kinds of people on this album and it makes it you know a pretty interesting listen um one second there just trying to you know get the proper track list up so let me go down the list because we got track one featuring selena johnson called donda it's the donda chant you got track two called jail featuring jay-z and francis and the lights we got track three god breathe featuring vori track four off the grid featuring playboy cardi and five year foreign track five hurricane featuring lil baby and the weekend we got track six featuring baby keem and travis scott track seven featuring lil dirk and vori track eight featuring five year foreign and lil yadi track nine featuring playboy cardi track 10 believe what they say with just kanye west track 11 24 featuring the sunday service choir and corey henry i'm not familiar with who corey henry is but you know shout out to you track 12 remote control featuring young thug track 13 moon featuring don Tolliver and kid cuddy track 14 heaven and hell track 15 donda featuring ariana grande and tony williams track 16 keep my spirit alive featuring conway the machine casey and west side gun not sure who casey is but you know shout out to you as well track 17 jesus lord featuring jay electronica and swiss beats i just gotta say one of my favorite tracks because jay electronica does what jay electronica does and i'm a person that is a huge fan of jay electronica and every time anytime somebody gives us a moment to appreciate new music from jay electronica i am happy for it very much like 
Um, 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 the project with JLX and Jay Z. I have no idea. I don't remember what the album is called, but y'all know what I'm talking about. There's only one album with Jay Electronica and Jay Z. Um, where was I? Track 18, New Again, featuring Chris Brown. Track 19, Tell the Vision, featuring Pop Smoke. All right, I gotta say something about that. For those of y'all that listen to Pop Smoke recent album, recent album, this is pretty much just We Made It. The, the vocal from We Made It off of that album on this with some muffling on it and some new Kanye production on it. But And I, by the way, I'm just listing the features. I'm not even going down the like the production credits because when it comes when it comes to production credits, it seems like almost every song on this album features like five people on the production side alongside of Kanye, which you know isn't surprising. But it just reminds me of some of my predictions that I was saying leading up to the album. Whereas like not to say that i'm right and toot my own horn and stuff but you know i feel like i kind of call this where it's like he's definitely getting in getting back into his dark twisted fantasy type vibe where it's like him and the world producing this i apologize my headphones keep slipping you know but television is not really one of the most memorable songs in my opinion it's like like i said if you heard we made it from that song to me it's a better song it's a better fit for those lyrics because it just sounds more in the realm of what pop smoke could have actually done i don't know if pop smoke could have did this were he here you know r.a.p and all of that but yeah i wasn't a fan of that song it was like an interesting moment but i was like i, I don't get why this is here we already heard this song type of thing it reminds me of what he did with panda i believe it was on life of pablo where he basically just took designer song said some stuff over it and called it one of his own songs but you know kanye is kanye he can do these kind of things apparently then we get to track 20 lord i need you featuring only kanye but you know mad people on the production side track 21 pure souls featuring roddy rich and shinsia and i gotta say that one hit me like out of left field shinsia was the last person that i was expecting on a kanye album especially gospel kanye like maybe had this been during dark twisted fantasy period you know i might not have been by as surprised by it but it's like for those familiar with shinsia she's a dancehall artist and not exactly like a dancehall artist in the vein that maybe let's say a buju banton might be somebody that's a you know on the spiritual side you know some of the reggae she's like dancehall dancehall raunchy spice lane vibe type of like this is the last person i was expecting to see on a kanye west album but you know not giving my opinion on it too far because i only heard it once it just struck, struck me by surprise i was in shock so i wasn't really able to you know process all that well whether it was actually good or not or what the lyrics and all of that was can't can't really get into that yet then we got track 22 come to life no features on that one track 23 no child left behind featuring the sunday service choir and vori we got jail part two this is what i was um, referencing earlier jail part two is the or jail part one is the song with jay-z on it and then we get part two being the one with the baby the alternate version and marilyn manson i don't recall his actual lyrics being there but i could be wrong because i don't know what marilyn manson's voice sounds like i'm not the biggest fan i don't listen to his music so forgive me for not knowing what he sounds like but maybe it was just a, a sample or something i don't know it could be then we get okay okay part two and it features Shansia again and Ruga. I don't know who that is, but you know. Okay, now I'm confused because Shansia is featured on two songs. I only remember hearing her twice or once, but may maybe she was there and I just didn't recognize her while I was listening to it the first time. Either way, the fact that Shansia is on this album at all is still confusing to me. Shout out to her. She also dropped a new single, Be Good 
right now, you know. If y'all fan of dancehall music, go check it out. Support the Caribbean artists and all of that. Um, and then we get to Junior, part two. I think that's how you pronounce it. Featuring Playboy Cardi and Ty Dolla Sign. You know, I'm always a fan of Ty Dolla Sign. He never disappoints when it comes to features and stuff like that. Even though we still waiting on you to actually drop a solid album for yourself. Like the closest thing you ever did. Or like, in my opinion, was Free TC. That had the LA songs and all of that. That was your best album. Gave us inklings and hints at some of your true potential with certain songs off of that. But then you never really came close to channeling all of that in the same way again. But you know. <clears throat> it is what it is. Tight Dolla Sign. Still a fan just want you to know channel basically i just want the r&b album from ty dollar saying like i'm not a fan of all of his pop stuff but whenever he actually sings sings it's like he got such a soulful voice and all of that it's like i don't know why this dude doesn't just make r&b i get you're versatile you're capable of doing all the other stuff but does all the other stuff resonate the same way as your r&b music i don't think it does i don't even know if he realizes it because his most recent project the well no not his most recent project but the last project i listened to from him because i haven't checked out his latest project which just dropped with division and him and division haven't checked that one out yet but the one before that where it was ty featuring ty it was like in my head or at least i thought he was finding and get it right and give us the tie that shows up on all the features like um there's the one with cole purple emoji i think it's called there's like horses on the stable there's one with this other person um i can't remember the name of the feature right now but the name of the song is perfect it's boring it's, it's like when ty gets in his r&b bag it's different but he likes this pop shit but anyway um, I believe it was on Junior Part 2 featuring Playboy, yeah, Playboy Cardi and Ty Dolla Sign, 26. Track 27, The Lord Part 2 featuring J Electronica, The Locks, and Swiss Beats. Now, I just said to me, I think this is probably my standout because it's like you got J Electronica and The Locks delivering like solid verses on top of Kanye's production that's just doing what Kanye does. But <clears throat> it's like. I definitely want to listen to this project some more so that I could properly digest. But then that last song, J Electronica, The Locks, like Jada Kiss coming off of a great verses and all of that. Like he can't miss right now. So I feel like it's definitely the time. The Jay-Z verse was dope. The The Baby verse was dope. Like the Shansia feature was dope. Cause she said stuff that had like like I was saying, she's a dancehall artist, a raunchy dancehall artist at that. And her being on a gospel album is like a different side of Shinsia, as well as the baby, which to me was a nice change of pace. Whereas, like a lot of the baby stuff, people been saying he only got one flow, he never switches up his flow, and all of these types of things. And there is some kind of truth to it, but like it's not that he doesn't switch up his flow, but it's like similar bops that he is a similar vibe that he kind of sticks in he figured out his sound and he kind of stays within that realm to a certain degree with slight variations and alterations here and there but for the most part the baby does what the baby does but on this kanye album is like kanye brought out a different side of the baby and it was interesting to go along with my, my set of interesting coincidences coincidences or predictions or whatever Kendrick Lamar drop not a project the way Kanye did but he dropped a single and it's an interesting thing because there's a lot to unpack about this in a way it's like First of all, it's a, not a Kendrick Lamar single. It's a Baby Keem single featuring Kendrick Lamar or with Kendrick Lamar. And the video 
dropped on the same day as well it's directed by dave free i suggest you watch check out the video it's interesting it's weird it's creative it's different it's dave free directing the video kind of tying into some of what i was saying last week about pg lang and this being the new venture that kendrick seems to be stepping into he, there's like quite a few nods and shout outs to the song to the label or the collective creative agency whatever pg lang is i think it might be a media company because they handle or it seems as though they're doing video visual stuff as well as music stuff being day free seeing as day free is a director so i think that's probably why it's not they don't just want to call it a record straight up record label because it gets a little bit more if these people are directing music videos there as well but anyway <clears throat> pg lang was all over it in the video shout being shouted out in the song and baby keem is the, like i was saying is um last week i believe i think i mentioned it last week he's the first artist on tde and it seems as though it's kind of tde i mean he's the first artist on pg lang my bad sorry he is it seems as though he's kendrick's family according to the internet baby keem is kendrick's cousin and the artwork for family ties shows a family picture kind of in the same vein as kendrick's good kid mad city artwork where all the faces or at least the eyes are crossed out from the home from him and the homies but it shows of like the only two people whose eyes are not blacked out are kendrick and baby keem which led everybody to speculate you know he's the family and it just kind of to me i thought that was interesting seeing the way that kendrick was groomed or brought up in the music industry being under td and seeing that they move very close-knit and it's kind of they kind of portray the family vibe to the world or to the public when they talk about the black area black hippie era how they all kind of were in training camps and stuff when artists get initially signed like there was times when SZA was talking about this her and Isaiah both being put into like the TDE training camp and boot camp and stuff like that to learn how to write and make songs and part of the artist development process that they have it seems like you know Kendrick is going to a similar direction signing his actual family but anyway about the actual song Baby Keem spit some dope flows. Baby Keem talked about Kendrick giving him an opportunity. Him starting off as a producer and producing for Kendrick, it seems, because he produced this beat as well. How he first got in an opportunity with Kendrick or with TDE, that part is a little unclear, but he got his opportunity to kind of come along and join the squad as a producer and then as he kind of won them over and impressed them with the hard work and the skill and all of that he got his he got his shot basically i'm sure being kendrick's family didn't hurt to get the opportunity but you still at least gotta put in the work and based on what he's spitting it seems as though he actually you know he can rap but then like joe budden on the podcast was saying the boogeyman came and the boogeyman destroyed Candyman, boogeyman call him whatever you want in my opinion this was control 2.0 this was kendrick reminding y'all why he is who he is and if you forgot who he was he made sure to let you know who he is told you to forget your single forget your album forget your whole hard drive it's not worth it like there's a couple lines in Kendrick's song that's like hmm I wonder who he could be talking about because Kendrick does what Kendrick does. Like there's one line where it's not actually said by Kendrick. 
it's Baby Keem saying it because the first half of the song starts off with Baby Keem rapping, then we get um, Kendrick rapping, and then it kind of goes back and forth between Keem and Kendrick, like a bar for bar or two bars each, something like that. But Baby Keem says number two is DMing his chick. He's not even going to ask why. Or something to that effect. I might have misquoted it a little bit. But number the, the, the gist of it is number two. Whoever that may be in the rap industry seems to be in his chick's DMs. I'm just assuming was that actually Kendrick that wrote that or that you know inspired that it's like Kendrick speaking through Keem in this particular instance I think that might be what the case is in this instance and there's a certain like well, when you think about who's number two in the rap game from a Kendrick's perspective if you're talking about the top three there it's a short list of names it's Kendrick Drake and Cole and just given this list of names this pool of people obviously Kendrick is eliminated so that leaves Drake and Cole out of these two people who do you think's mo it is to be dming people's girl I'm gonna let y'all answer that one I don't think I need to say it but it's like hmm makes me wonder what is going to be coming on this Oklahoma project or at least some people try to make it or be, the project might not be called Oklahoma but it seems he is using the alias Oklahoma because in the video shout out to Normani because she was in the video as well I'm saying shout out to her like I know her personally but anyway shout out to Normani in the video doing her thing looking great and all of that but there was a point where the credits came up and Kendrick was basically listed as Oklahoma kind of tying back to what I was trying to figure out last week what it was like is Oklahoma gonna be called the album but it seems like last album or the album before whichever one it was yeah i think it was last album on damn where he was you know embracing the moniker kung fu kenny it seems as though the moniker for whatever this album moniker or alias alter ego whatever you want to call it for this upcoming album seems to be oklahoma i wonder if it has anything to do with his beach cruisers i wonder if this means we're getting a country album but based on what this single sounds like although this is baby keem's song and apparently it seems this song is supposed to be um part of baby keem's upcoming album and not kendrick's so it doesn't really give us any kind of clue or hint as to what kendrick's album is going to sound like what direction he's going there if it's if this is what comes on the album, I am not mad because Kendrick is rapping. Ken, it seems as though Kendrick still has new flows to invent, still has new deliveries. Although the one thing I will say about this one, this is more rap nerd stuff, but just listening to how the song is recorded, I don't think he could... I don't want to, you know, doubt Kendrick because I know he's a great MC but I don't think he can ever do this song justice live the way it sounds on the record because it's clearly like multiple takes that are just chopped and um, pieced together because the different intonations and inflections and stuff that he's doing at certain but the way it switches it's like too sudden and too perfect to be able to have done this in one take or the amount of practice it will take to do this in one take like this is just me speaking from you know being in studio seeing how people record these types of verses so it's like me just kind of getting into the engineer side of me thinking on how it was put together and breaking it down in my head but i'm just curious i, I would love to see it perform live but i don't think it will be the same and capture that energy of what he did in particular on this on the recording of it 
is still a dope ass verse though like all of the beat changes and flips and the intonation changes and he now with the social gimmicks he duck in the fake activists Kendrick was throwing shots Eating like many shots were fired whoever gets hit see now it, it all ties in because last week I was mentioning you know I alluded to his his the message that he left up and in that message you know at a certain point he said he was praying for people and now that he dropped this song it makes all the sense in the world that he was praying for y'all because it's like he knew he was about to kill all y'all and that's pretty much what happened if you're not a fan of kendrick if you're not a fan of kanye i apologize for all the music talking you know, two weeks back to back but i'm a fan of music these are things that i find interesting to talk about so it's like that's what i'm talking about now maybe the next week's episode will be more for you so you know hopefully you tune into that one but it's like music is an, is an interesting space and to kind of like wrap up I guess the last thing I'll mention being Ray Vaughn. This dropped on the same day, I believe, as the announcement as TDE is um, the same day that Kendrick announced that it'll be his last TDE album. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they also announced from like the TDE official Instagram and Twitter and all of that. That they signed Ray Vaughn. New artist, newest TDE signee, another rapper. Don't know too much about him, if I recall correctly, because I did watch his um, LA Leakers freestyle Power 106. No, Power 106 is the Breakfast Club people. But anyway, the LA Leakers, they did a freestyle. If you're not familiar, go look, go search for it on YouTube. It's definitely worth the watch like he did two um beats the first beat was a snoop beat if i recall correctly and then the second beat was um i can feel it in the air i think but either way he killed both of those beats like the first beat he was just going off with the bars like showing off his punchline metaphor simile game and all that i getting into that kind of just straight up rapidly rap bar nothing but bars type of rap and then he kind of got a little bit more emotion <laughs> he got a little bit more emotional sentimental kind of a little bit more storytelling aspect on the second one and was like dude is talented but this is the only thing that i'm judging off of his la leakers freestyle I haven't heard any albums or anything like that from him yet I haven't heard any actual recordings but based on this freestyle i'm definitely curious to check it out so gonna see what that sounds like but to me it was interesting just the move of signing a new artist pretty much when your flagship artist your biggest artist has announced his departure his final album from the label it's just an interesting move overall you know I guess it's trying to mitigate the losses to a certain degree. I don't know if Rayvon, like, I couldn't help but look at it because of the timing of the announcement and of both things. I can't help but look at it as Rayvon is kind of attempts at plugging the holes, at mitigating the losses that come from losing Kendrick. But it's like, in terms of what Kendrick is to hip hop, what he means, how talented he is, where he is in the game right now is like. No disrespect to Rayvon, but I don't think he's enough. Maybe he will be in time. Maybe he's like immensely talented. Like it seems like the response from him was pretty well. Like he's definite. He definitely can rap. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like anytime somebody is being put in the same light as Kendrick, it's a tall order for anyone. Like it's a difficult matchup. But I want to, you know wish him the best i'm like i'm still a huge fan of tde i'm optimistic to see what happens with the future of all of their labels but based on the fact that 
this baby keen project dropped to me it seems like maybe kendrick might be coming sooner than expected i wasn't expecting to hear anything from kendrick but he dropped something he broke the silence there's a video there's his announcements of like formally announcing the album so it's like seems like he might be coming soon but still definitely want to be listening to donda some more so i'm glad kanye dropped now the next thing is like when will drake drop because he said his shit set in stone he's not afraid of kanye and all of that even though it seems like after i recorded last week's episode beef, beef escalated further because there's all the leaking of addresses and stuff like that is happening drake posting his video hitting the like joker laugh looking like a super villain it's like who knows what drake has come in if he has anything coming i'm glad that kanye actually dropped and i'm glad that it has the j verse on it i'm curious now because kanye did announce as well that a watch the throne 2 is coming at some point possibly the end of the year but i was just very skeptical of it because i'm like kanye you delayed the first album that you owed us mad times so it was like i wanted to see if we could get past and actually get this first album before we really get into much talks about like is there gonna be a second album i think i should probably like look at the camera more when i'm talking because for whatever reason i'm looking at the time and you know i think it just makes a better experience for the people watching if i actually looked at the camera but all of these things is just concerns and thoughts and i don't know if any of it actually matters to the viewer so please feel free to let me know give me suggestions opinions thoughts anything like that that you may have on the setup the recording you know <clears throat> anything just let me know what y'all think so we can help and basically i want to give you all the best show possible so if you have suggestions and advice things that you'd like to recommend or see from me if it's possibly guests because i know it's pretty both the first two episodes have just been me talking but i do plan to have guests and all of that similar to like the link up of old so <clears throat> it is something that i'm going to get up and running again pretty soon but just patience patience they're coming but just let me know what you think let me know what you thought on my my theories my opinions my review even though like i, I say I, I admit i didn't get too deep into the kanye one because i'm recording this hours after his album dropped and his album is two hours so it's not a whole lot of time for me to feasibly have listened to the album in depthly but i definitely know that that jlx verse that jay-z verse the locks verse these are some standout moments that i can just say that i definitely want to revisit further the shensia one as well unexpected moments so yeah With all of that being said, I think we can wrap wrap this episode up pretty soon. Um, for those that don't know, for those that might not have been aware, there's music out by me. This is where we're getting into the plug segment because I realized like on the first episode last week I didn't mention any plugs, you know. But just so you know, if you're in, if you was enjoying the music that was featured in the in the the background music basically if you enjoyed it there's a link to it in the description of the video you can stream in there if you would like to rap over it and stuff there's a link once you hit the link in the description video you can go there and buy the beat if you want to rap to it for example for all the rappers out there because i've in during the pandemic i got more on my producer grind so I started making beats i set up my beat stars page so i can lease and license and sell beats and stuff like that so if you're interested in any of that go check it out <clears throat> let me know what you think of the beat let me know what you think of the podcast let me know what you think of the um kanye album let me know what you think of kendrick's albums let me know what you think of ray vaughn and tde signing ray vaughn in the departure or in the wake of kendrick's departure 
there's also new music outside of you know my whatchamacallit outside of my production me stepping up on the production side i kind of got back into music since we were off of the podcast for mad long <clears throat> and there's been a couple new releases there's been a project from the homie tz shout out the ebenezer peoples tz me and tz dropped a project called welcome to the kingdom is out now on all streaming services it's you know check my ig there's links to it and all of that stuff there <clears throat> me and screw drop something as well this was something that has been meaning to come out for a minute which was swaliga the swaliga two pack that's the ep with two songs it features the original swaliga and a remix to swaliga featuring myself and tz as well that is also now available on all streaming services so make sure you check that out by the way the welcome to the kingdom project that is just a tz solo project with him rapping i am handling all the production on it it's a tree song ep i also have another three song ep with tz that he put out um off top it's called island vibes or summer vibes I, i'm blanking on name right now pardon me on that but make sure you go to if you found welcome to the kingdom go to tz's profile on spotify it's there as well you'll see the, the other project that project is also produced by me it's another three song ep but this one is just the summer vibes island vibes a more tropical flavor so if you want to hear that project go, go give that one a stream there's also the woods pack the woods pack drop this year as well because i've been working this year for those who of y'all who may be unfamiliar i've been working i've been putting in work just because it was the podcast was done had to keep busy so like you know there's the wood pack the woods pack i mean <clears throat> that's my project me rapping on it but woods shout out to the homie woods he produced it as well shout out to woods on his latest release no hesitation check that out if you haven't but yeah the woods pack it was i'm rapping on it it's a three song ep it's out now on all streaming services so make sure you check that out i need to put links to these things in the description so yeah you know i think i'm gonna do that to make it easier the woods pack welcome to the kingdom the swaliga two pack and summer vibes or island vibes you know i'm blank i'm i apologize for mixing up the names but you know shout out to tz it was dope working on both of those projects gotta keep working on more because you know tz is a talented dude he is indeed especially when he's you know rapping over my beats it's like extra talented in my opinion in those moments (laughs) but anyway i think i've bored y'all enough with plugs so make sure you know if you're interested in supporting the link up support those projects stream this share this like subscribe do all of that and we'll see you the next time i link up <laughs>